problems in the paper to my put my problems problems paper dial up the deputy mad at my brown 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 problems in the paper to my put my problems problems paper dial up the deputy mad at my brown 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 problems in the paper to my put my problems problems paper dial up the deputy mad at my brown 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 problems in the paper Hi everybody how you doing so check this out Isn't that cool That is the Insta360 Sphere camera for the Mavic Air 2 and the Air 2S and that's what I'm going to show you today it is their newest iteration of the drone FPV drone camera. Uh, they came out with something like this for the Mavic 2 Pro not too long ago, a couple of years ago. It didn't do very well. I think there was a lot of issues with it. So I think what they took what they learned from that one and made this one a lot better. So they fixed the stitching issues, they fixed the GPS issues. And, uh, and so hopefully this one does a little bit better than that one does. And basically what it is, it's two cameras separated. It's a 360 system. So it captures everything around, up and down when you fly the drone around. And then after you're done recording that footage, you download it onto your computer or you can use the app on your phone. It's actually better to use the studio app on your computer. And then you can take that footage and make it look like FPV footage. You know, a lot of people are asking me all the time, Russ, when are you gonna try FPV? And I'm gonna try it, you guys, I promise, I will. But I just don't have time right now. And so this is kind of the next best thing. I'm gonna be able to capture FPV footage. I won't be able to experience what it's like to fly FPV, but this is the next best thing and it's gonna to have to do for now. And so I've flown it around the yard a little bit already just to check to see if it affected the performance of the drone and it does not. The only thing I noticed is it's quite a bit louder just because these motors have to work quite a bit harder to hold up the extra weight. But as far as maneuvering the drone or flying it up or down or around or anything, there's no issues there. There's no issues with the GPS. It doesn't affect the GPS signal. Uh, I still had a lock on right away, so that is really cool. Uh, the memory card fits right into the unit here, and then the power and the record button are on there, so you actually have to hit record and then launch your drone, fly around, land your drone, turn it off, and then stop the record button. Um, it does have a battery indicator on it, so you can see how much battery you have left on the other side, it's super easy to clasp on here. You just wrap it around your drone. It just hugs the drone and then it clamps on there. Very, very simple to install. You do have to either hand launch this drone like this, you know, just because the camera on the bottom, or you have to use the landing pad that they send you. I prefer to hand launch and hand catch, but, uh, but they recommend using the landing pad. Okay, one thing that I really don't like is that you have to use a landing pad, but it sits kind of crooked like this. And I just don't like having this propeller so close to the ground. So I kind of wish they had, you know what they need? They need like a stand that they sell with this, or actually it should come with it. A little stand that you can set this on, a customized, maybe somebody could 3D print something, you know, that this sits on so it's level when it takes off. Cause this just seems really awkward right here. So, you know, I think the best is gonna be to hand launch it. But, uh, but I think there should be something for this. Yeah, I'm kind of excited to see what this looks like. I know that I've watched some example footage that they've sent me and it looks really, really cool. Hopefully I can duplicate some of those things and show you guys if this is actually worth the money. I'm not sure what the price is yet, but I'll put it down in the video description once I do know. So, um, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna drive around. I'm gonna fly around some different objects and I'm just going to fly around in different directions and all that and then I'll come home I'll download everything onto my computer and I'll um, use the Insta360 Studio app and the Shot Lab to edit the footage to make it look like FPV so I don't know I don't know if this is going to turn out or not hopefully it does um, I like the concept it's really cool and uh, I think it's going to be really fun to to post some of that footage on social media like on TikTok or Instagram Reels, I think people are gonna be like, wow, that he captured that with the Air 2S. So yeah, so anyway, enough talking. Let's get this up in the air. Next time you see me, we'll be at the computer showing you how to edit this footage. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you, this is the footage straight out of the Air 2S. I'm just flying around the gravel pit here. I did speed it up a little bit just to kind of show you how much I flew through here. But um, so this is what it looks like normally with the drone. I'm recording at 4K 30. And so then what I did is I opened up the Insta360 Studio app. I imported that footage. And then all you do is you start editing it and you just start adding keyframes. You can change 
anything and everything that you want. You can change the perspective, you can change the roll, the pitch, the tilt, like everything. And you just make it look like FPV. Now I will say the hardest part about the sphere and any 360 camera is editing, like trying to figure out how to position everything and get the look that you want it to look like. And so that does take a lot of practice. I'll tell you that right now, it doesn't come fast. I still have a lot to learn, even though I've been doing this for quite a while. And basically you just position the camera wherever you want and you make it look the best that you can. And then you export it, see what it looks like. And if it doesn't work, you go back to the drawing board. So this is sped up quite a bit here. I just wanted to show you guys the editing process. And here is the final exported project. Now I did speed this up about 250%. And these turns are still kind of choppy. I could still smooth those out a little bit. I just kind of put this together in a little bit of a hurry, but you can see that it actually looks pretty cool and it actually looks like an FPV drone. One of the most common moves you see with FPV drones is the dive. And that's where you fly up and over and then straight down a tall obstacle. Now for this one, I used the water tower and all I did with the Air 2S is I just flew straight up, I went over a little bit and then flew straight down. And then I used the studio app to position the camera to make it look like an FPV drone. And this one actually turned out really good and uh, it was actually pretty easy to do. So there's a lot that you can do with this programming and this is one of my favorites. Now this was my favorite thing to do with this sphere. I went out to the trestle near our town here and the train happened to come by as I was flying and it was so, so awesome. I had so much fun shooting this. Now I may or may not have flown over the train, but, uh, but I made a video not too long ago about uh, how you should not fly over trains. And so you're just gonna have to wonder if I flew over the train or not because you're not gonna see it here on this video, but um, but yeah, it was so fun flying under the trestle, flying around here and uh, just getting some great shots of the train. This was like 6.30 in the morning, so it was beautiful, it was super calm. And you know, going up, doing some dives off the trestle. All I did was you just fly straight up, you go ahead a little bit and you fly straight down. Like I didn't have to move the drone at all. You just change the position in the editing program. And I think this was the third edit that I did with this. Right here, I had kind of a, oh crap moment. I cannot believe you guys. I can't believe this did not crash my Air 2S. I was like, oh my God, did that just hit the cable? I thought I was clear of it, but I guess not. But anyway, this was so, so fun. And uh, yeah, this thing is really, really cool. So <laughs> that was pretty cool. Now I see my battery went dead on the sphere train just went over on the trestle when I was filming. So hopefully I got some of that footage because that's gonna look really cool. But uh, here's a couple of things. Number one, this is not for beginners. I wouldn't fly this on here, on the Air 2S or the Air 2, if you were inexperienced with flying a drone. Just because, you know, it does handle just a little bit differently. It's not, it's not major, but, but it's definitely heavier. It flies heavier. It's not quite as responsive. And when you're a new pilot, that's kind of challenging. So I will say that. The other thing is I would make sure that you keep your drone within visual line of sight when you're using this. Just because to get the best footage, you want to be as close to the objects that you're filming as possible. And if you're you know, beyond visual line of sight, you're not going to be able to see where you are, especially if you're going over you know, a subject and you want to come down, you might get a little bit too close and hit something. So you don't want to do that. <laughs> And uh, so that's why I would keep the drone within visual line of sight for certain to get the best footage. I mean, you could maybe go a little bit further, but you're going to have to stay pretty far away and it's not going to look as good. So, so yeah, it, uh, it did quite well. I'm going to take this home and I'm put it on the computer and see what we can do with this footage. Also, I'm going to do a little bit of editing with the app to show you how that works, uh, just because it has a few more options on there for uh, with, the, with the shot lab and stuff like that. So anyway, um, yes, I'm wearing a winter coat. It's 38 degrees right now, you guys on May 21st, so isn't that fun? All right, so let's head home and check this out. Now this effect is called the dolly zoom effect and it's really, really easy. You just fly towards a subject and then you head into the actual app on your phone or on your iPad and you just choose dolly zoom and then you just highlight the subject and, and then it does all the work for you. Now this does, mine had a little bit of a couple of glitches in there because I didn't fly the drone perfectly straight at the water tower but uh, if you fly it perfectly straight at your subject it's going to turn out to be a lot better than this one but uh, 
But yeah, it's a pretty fun effect. I know a lot of people like to do this one. So this one's probably the easiest to do. This is another edit I did on my iPad. And this one is just called the flyby swing. And all you do is you just fly straight ahead alongside a subject. And then once you um, open it with the app, you just go ahead and just move the camera so it faces your subject. And then just move forward and just keep moving the camera and set keyframes. And eventually you'll have uh, just a flyby. So I didn't move the drone at all. I just flew the drone straight ahead. And then I just edited with the app and that just made it look like I was turning the drone in the air as I was flying. So this is a probably the first one that you'll want to do if you do get this because it is the easiest one to do and it does look pretty good. Here's another automated effect that the Insta360 app can do for you. This one's called Horizon Flip and it's pretty interesting. Some people might not like it. It might seem a little bit gimmicky, but I actually like it. And then it does add music as well. And the music is pretty good and it goes along with the scene. So another fun one for you. Now, one of the most interesting and most fun ways to edit the footage out of this camera is with the Snap Wizard on the app, on the Insta360 app. You can use it on your iPad or your phone or whatever. It's better with the iPad because you get, you know, more of a view and you can use your fingers basically to move around in the scene. And then as you use your fingers, you can hold the record button, okay? And then move the field of view to whichever direction you want. You can pinch in, you can pinch out. Like, it's so cool. And then the other thing, and this is awesome, it's motion controlled. So you can change the perspective of the camera as you're moving through the scene with your thumb. Like, isn't that so cool? Snap Wizard, it's been on here for a while on the Insta360 app, but I have not used it. And they asked me to check it out and let you all know what I think. And I think it is the ultimate way to edit any footage from an Insta360 camera. And even more importantly, with this camera, with the sphere, because you can really move it around to make it look like FPV. Like I just showed you how to do it with setting keyframes. This is 100 times faster and actually looks a lot better. So check out the Snap Wizard. Even if you don't get the sphere, if you have any Insta360 camera, it's really cool. The Insta360 Sphere camera is fun, it's innovative, and it's a whole new way to experience aerial content creation. Now, no product is perfect, and this is no exception. Just a couple of things. Number one, I do wish it had a launching platform to come off from so it doesn't sit crooked when you take off from the landing pad. I'm gonna continue to hand launch with it, but there may be those that don't like to hand launch and it might be more comfortable for them to have something to set it on to launch from. Secondly, there are situations where you're still gonna see the stitch line. It's 100%, 1000% better than the Mavic 2 Pro system that they had a few years ago, but there's still situations if you're close to a subject, that stitch line is going to be visible. All you have to do though is just change the position, the field of view of the camera. You can get rid of that stitch line there. You can also play with the studio app. There's some options where you can, you know, check off optical flow stitch or normal stitch or whatever. And you can also use the um, lens guards, the sticky lens guards. I don't like them because I think the stitch line is definitely much easier to manage without the sticky lens guards. Insta360 does recommend that you use them. And I think that's just because these lenses are very vulnerable. They're easy to scratch. You don't want to get them, you know, wrecked at all because this is kind of expensive. So I don't use the sticky lens guards, but just know that the manufacturer does recommend them for the ultimate protection of this. No matter what, always use these. These rubber guards need to be on these lenses at all times. If your drone is not in the air with this on it, you need to have these rubber lens guards. These lenses are extremely vulnerable they're easy to scratch and once you get one scratch on there the whole thing is ruined so very very important to use these and i think that's why insta360 wants you to use those sticky guards the battery life not too bad it's about 50 minutes i wish it was a little bit longer but that's going to exceed any drone life any drone battery life that you have but i kind of wish it could go through three batteries instead of two batteries there's no overheating problems i ran this for 50 minutes straight you know it got a little bit warm but i don't think you ever have to worry about it overheating or having any issues like that. I do like that on the inside, it does have these rubber guards here, these rubber bumpers. And so it's not gonna scratch your drone when you have it installed. And I think that also helps with vibration 
anytime that your drone has a, a little extra weight on it, it's gonna vibrate a little bit more. I didn't have any problems with vibration on any of my footage. Finally, this is not for everyone. This is not for beginners and it's a little more expensive. It's right around $400. So this isn't gonna be something that you're just gonna go out and spend if you just got the Mavic Air 2 or the Air 2S. It's for a very specific group of people that wanna kind of step up their game. You know, they've been flying their drone for a while and they wanna do something new. They wanna to try to get some of that FPV looking footage then this is gonna be an awesome product for you. Now, for those of you purists out there, FPV purists, I know this is not FPV. I know you're gonna say that's stupid, don't do that, just get an FPV drone, but just know that a lot of people aren't willing to learn FPV, they're not interested in it, but they do like that, you know, that look of an FPV drone, and that's who this is for. This is not meant to replace FPV, so I know you guys FPV guys are hardcore and they're gonna laugh at something like this, but FPV is not for everyone. So yeah, it's cheating, I admit it, but still, it's really fun and it looks really cool. If you have any questions about the sphere, let me know down in the comments. There's a lot that I didn't cover, including a lot of the different modes that you have in the shot lab on the app. I know from now on, I'm gonna use the snap wizard because I didn't understand or realize how easy it was to edit footage with that. If you got anything of value out of this video, click on that thumbs up button, I really appreciate it. Subscribe for more videos like this. Follow me on social media, TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. I'm gonna be posting a lot of stuff with this camera, especially on TikTok and Instagram Reels. I wanna thank you for watching the entire video today. Have a great day, everyone. And as always, fly safe and fly smart.